Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In today's session, I shall be discussing on IPv6 header format. So to, to begin with, let us see first the packet format of IPv6. IPv6 packet format consists of like any other, even if you take the IPv4 packet or any other protocol format, basically what is that the two different parts will be always the payload and the uh, header part. Similarly here for IPv6, you have the header and the payload. You call it as the base header here and the second part is the payload. This base header consisting of uh, consists of 40 bytes. IPv4, you have seen that the base header is in the range of 20 to 60 bytes. So 20 is actually the minimum bytes required in IPv4 plus the remaining 40 can be options there in IPv4. But in IPv6, you can see that the word options is not at all appearing. Completely it is consisting of 40 bytes base header and that base header I have shown this base header, I have shown it here in this expanded diagram. You can see the different fields that are available in IPv6. And to uh, and the second part of the packet that is the payload can be up to 65,535 bytes. And if you look into the features of IPv6, see these are the features for IPv6 protocol. We definitely have a better header format because we are not going to combine the options with the header part options are completely put in a different field and next we have the new options some options which were not at all available in ipv4 like the security option or the uh, encrypted this one what is it authentication option these kind of options which are not there in ipv4 are included in ipv6 then you have allowance for extension the ipv6 protocol is designed in such a manner that it, it uh, gives the flexibility to expand also in future depending on the newer trends, new and, uh, newer technology, the advanced technology that will come in uh, future. Okay, That particular keeping in mind that the protocol uh, can be definitely extended also. This support is there. Support for resource allocation is also there. Now, what do you mean by support for resource allo allocation? This thing you can definitely understand with one field of IPv6 that is the flow label. So there you can definitely see how the support for resource allocation is done in IPv6. Support for more security as I said, this um, authentication and uh, encrypted form of messages. These two were not there in IPv4, it is included in IPv6. To look at the format, the header looks very simple when you compare to the IPv4 because there you would have seen so many fields that were present in IPv4. But in this uh, IPv6 header, you are seeing the less number of fields. So more number of features, less number of fields, how is it possible? This is possible because of this particular field called as the next header. All the features which are supported extra features are hidden in this next header. Next header. So this next header I shall be explaining you in detail in the next session but time being it is to remember in simpler words the next header is like the options of IPv4 which are the different options in IPv4 those options are included in the next header. So that's the reason IPv6 uh, packet format depending on what options are needed only that options will be included in the payload part here. So you can always rem uh, remember like this if this is the base header fine then the payload is always what normally the payload is the data that comes from the upper layer layer here what you are doing to going to do is the next header are nothing but the extension headers so which are the different options you want to use that extension header suppose extension header one one that is one option comma extension header two if you are interested to include then comes the last part that is the data so the payload consists of what here the extension headers and the data from the upper layer layer so this is how depending on the requirement only the options are included in the payload part of the packet so this becomes like exclusively one single question separately on uh, ipv6 packet format this is just one field here which is mentioned but the explanation requires uh, what uh, the detailed uh, information regarding the different options or we can say different extension headers that i'll be explaining in the next session now remaining uh, the other fields if you begin with it is very simple because most of now you know the functionality of the different fields of ipv4 so it is easy for you to uh, remember the it is easy for you to understand the functionalities of ipv6 the names of the fields may be different here but most of the fields have got the same functionality the first one is the version field which is occupying four bits so definitely here there is no question the i version is six so always the value for the version will be in the binary 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 this will be the value for the version traffic class is eight bits this traffic class is 
same like the service type of your IPv4. So it requires differential services and uh, it is uh, basically what how the packet has to be treated. So this in detail I have explained for the IPv4 packet format. Okay, in that I have explained about the service type, the same thing is applicable here for the traffic class of IPv6. The packet, the treatment for the packet, basically in, in simpler words, if you have to say the treatment for the packet, because based on the performance matrices, uh, metrics which are like delay, you want lesser delay, maximum throughput, no packet loss. So these are the different requirements for a packet, depending on the requirement only the bits are set or reset in this type of field, which is called as the service which is called as the traffic class it is same like the service type of ipv4 the third one is the flow label here flow label is a very important field here in ipv6 and it takes how many bits 20 bits are reserved for the flow label flow label basically supports the resource allocation now flow label according to a router is simply a sequence of packets that has got the same characteristics that has to use the same resources that has to be treated on top priority. So that flow, that means those packets will carry a number, we call it as a label. So that flow, that is the series of packets that are coming or even if it is coming after the other packets, which are the normal packets, but those packets will carry a label number. So when a router receives a packet with a certain flow label, that is with the label number, it will refer its flow label table. Now one more word you should remember, flow label table. In that it will see okay for so and so table num uh, flow, flow, uh, label number for so and so uh, label number if the packet carries what is the next hop what is the treatment to be given for that packet. So basically this is used to increase the speed of processing what has happened is if if you are not going with this flow label if you are not reserving the resources so in a normal way the packets will be treated the router will always refer its routing table to find the next stop but if a flow if a packet carries a flow label the router will skip that part the router is not going to run the routing algorithm to determine the next stop rather what it will do is it will refer its flow label table and find out the next stop so that saves a lot of time so we say it is reducing the processing time drastically it is basically for the real time audio and video messages definitely we do not want any delay for these kind of messages so and with this concept actually flow label what has happened is normally we say uh, this is a connectionless service all the packets are taking different paths to reach to the destination so hope you remember if this is the source and this is the destination and you have different routes to reach the okay this uh, destination so one packet may take this path, another packet may take this path, the third one may take this path. Suppose if you are carrying out in this manner for the real time audio and video messages, there is a possibility that suppose if even if two packets reaches the destination, the other one is struck in the network, then it is not possible to retrieve the complete message at the destination. For that reason, instead of going for that, better to go, better to allocate the resource means you are, you are fixing the path. Okay, you have decided the packet should take this path only. only so this path, these three routers, it should take always. So uh, the packets that, that carries the same flow label number will take this path. That means you're reserv reserving the different resources on the path to reach the destination. So it becomes a virtual circuit connection. Instead of the datagram approach, it is moving to virtual circuit approach, wherein you're fixing the resources, you're reserving the resources so that your packet should not get delayed in the processing and it will reach the destination in the in time at the uh, this one at the destination it reaches in time so this is what is the uh, significance importance of this field which is very important field called as the flow label and you can see the feature here it supports for resource allocation the next field is payload length this is very simple see uh, in ipv4 what has happened is instead of payload length they had given the total length either they give the total length or the data so total length is always what total length is the data length that is the total length of the data plus the header part fine this data is what the payload isn't it you can use this word payload now in ipv in ipv4 total length was given header was known so you could easily determine the size of the data but here in ipv6 the field is payload length that means this length this particular uh, size of the payload is given header is known then you can determine the total length this is the difference here in the ipv6 
next header as i said it consists of all different options which i'll be explaining you the third this next field is the hop limit hop limit is simply the time to leave time to leave field of ipv4 ttl okay the ttl value is set by the source as and when the packet moves to the next stop the routers that means the next router will reduce the ttl value by 1 so in this is basically what to avoid looping in the network if the packet uh, if the ttl value of a packet becomes zero and still it is circulating in the network without reaching the destination then the router has to drop that packet so to prevent looping the ttl value is set by the source and it will and all the intermediate routers uh, will reduce the value of ttl by 1 that is every hop the value gets reduced by 1 so this is same like the ttl field of your IPv4 and the next two fields are what source address and the destination address this is mandatory because without the to address and from address without if you are sending any letter okay without writing the to address and the from address definitely there is uh, there is uh, no possibility that the letter reaches to the destination to the recipient so source address and destination address is a must and it is how many bits 128 bits but look here this is completely 0 to 31 so 32 bits are represented here in each field all this then how to represent this 128 bits okay these two rows we don't have any problem when you add up it becomes 32 but what about these two rows which are 128 bits for that reason you can always show in this manner this is very important okay you show it by what four different gaps here each indicating what 32 32 32 32 so that you can say all put together is what 128 bits similarly here so this way if you show here this is uh, 128 this is 128 bits so this is all about the header format of ipv6 protocol hope the session is useful to you all thank you bye bye take care